Hello and welcome to Sage and Stone Homestead. If you have not met me yet, my name is Heather and this is a part two of a video that I made discussing lye as a dewormer in your livestock. Now I really don't have an opinion either way. That's because the science hasn't proved it either way. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about this just to provoke a little bit more critical thinking because the conversation is still happening. Not necessarily on YouTube that I've seen but in other places and it's appropriate that we talk about it and this kind of research is very hard to find and so I've had a couple other people send me some links I wanted to share those with you to help you put those in your back pocket so if this is something that you are also passionate about and trying to understand then maybe these studies will be helpful for you now if you don't have the patience to listen to me yammer on I don't really blame you I do have all of the newer studies that I have been given listed in the description box below. I want to also note that I am absolutely open to discourse on this on this topic. We can talk about either side of things as long as we can do so constructively. I don't delete comments. I want everybody's opinions to be heard. Having said that, don't be cruel. <laughs> Before you have any extreme criticisms, please watch the whole video so you can get the full picture. All right, having said that, I do also want to put it out there that I don't personally need this to work for me. I don't need lye to work as a dewormer in my herd. What we've been working on here is breeding resistant animals and also focusing on stocking density. So if you're not familiar with our farm, we live at the bottom of all of the land that is around us. We are the bog. It is very muddy, it is very mucky. We absolutely could deal with a very serious amount of worm pressure if we did not focus on breeding resistant animals. I do use Bioworma in my herd. We do focus on stocking density. We have a lot of large pasture that we don't overstock. And we also try to keep our forages long. I did just mow some of the fields so that we can focus on growing some of our longer fall and winter grasses. Right now the summer grasses are dying back and I didn't want them shading them out. But again, that's me yammering on. Let's get into some of the newer science. Now, this is not science that proves that it works. There isn't science that proves that it works. There isn't science that says that it doesn't. Now, there has been a reference to a 1918 study where somebody said that there was research done through the USDA that showed that lye used as a dewormer for pigs was ineffective. All I can find is a blurb, like a paragraph, that states this, but it doesn't include a citation. And so I can't say for sure if this is accurate information. It's very unfortunate. I would love to be able to say for sure. I'm not sitting here saying that that study wasn't done. I just don't have the proof of it. What that blurb from 1918 feels like, it's just a 1918 version of what we're doing right now. We're saying things without the evidence to back it up. So I am still actively looking for that study if someone can please send it to me. But we do have some studies on sodium hydroxide soaked feed inside ruminants, like living animals in vivo studies. And I know that that was something that was I was appropriately criticized on in my last video while well, somebody has come to me with some in vivo studies in cattle. Now, just to clarify, again, these are not studies specifically researching worms, but I will tie it back to the worm conversation. What these studies show to me is that there is a lot of safety if you do it right in feeding a lye soaked feed to your animals because it's something that is apparently pretty widely done in the cattle industry, both on the beef side and on the dairy side. I was surprised to hear about that because it's not something I had heard about before. But the goals that they have in soaking their feed is called nixtamalization. And I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But what it does is it helps like basically pre-digest or pre-break down the grain so that when it enters the body of the animal, the feed has the maximum impact nutritionally on that animal so that we can get the most out of what we're feeding them and they can have the most 
productive output. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's translating into milk and meat. Actually a couple studies show that it didn't increase the milk output, but a nutritionally sound animal has a lot of thrift in many areas and it's very possible that this could be how a lye soaked grain could work against worms and we'll get into it. There's actually a study that I found personally that talked about the effect of a sodium hydroxide spray treatment on the digestibility of barley straw in sheep and goats. And this was done in 1981. And the study was done, it says, to investigate the possible potential of cheaper foodstuffs for small ruminants. An experiment was designed to compare the digestibility and acceptability of barley straw and barley straw sprayed with sodium hydroxide, which is lye. In feeding trials involving six sheep and six goats, chopped untreated barley straw was compared with straw chopped and sprayed with five grams of lye, sodium hydroxide, in a 60 ml solution for each 100 grams of straw. The treated straw was neither washed nor neutralized. Both the untreated straw and the treated straw were fed to the appetite of the sheep and goats with a protein, mineral, and vitamin supplement, and also water. It does note that both diets were readily consumed and there were no metabolic problems. This is something that I was worried about. The studies that I had seen and really the feed instructions that I had seen were mostly done in pigs to sweeten hog swill. And obviously pigs have a much different digestive system than a ruminant. So to see studies that have been done showing sodium hydroxide as a feed additive in ruminants, like in their actual bodies in vivo, that's really comforting for me to see because I can at least say that there are healthy dilutions or at least non-harmful dilutions for lye inside of ruminant animals. And there was a study that was sent to me, it was a study on cows. And one of the concerns that I had most was how does this lye solution affect the digestibility? Like how does it affect the rumen? How does it affect the microbiome? And is there something else going on? I don't think I mentioned this before. This probably would have been good to mention first, but when you mix sodium hydroxide in water, it is quite alkaline. The test that I did, I mixed half a teaspoon of sodium hydroxide and mixed it into about a quart of water. I took the pH and it was above 12, which is quite alkaline. As soon as I mixed it into the grain, it was about a, a gallon's worth of pig food that I mixed it into. I took the pH after everything was thoroughly mixed and it came back at an 8.1, which isn't super alkaline. It's more alkaline than the grain itself. So it buffered the grain, but it was not unsafe for the pigs to eat. It wasn't gonna cause any burning. But just because it wasn't going to burn them doesn't mean that it wasn't going to like harm their microbiome. And the microbiome inside a ruminant is very important. That's why I was very happy that this study was sent to me, that it was studied and proven to not affect the microbiome. This one is called Rumen Fermentation and Starch Degradation by Holstein Steers Fed Sodium Hydroxide or Formaldehyde Treated Wheat. It says that feeding two kilograms a day of a 2% sodium hydroxide treated feed did not negatively affect the main parameters of rumen fermentation, i.e. the pH, short chain fatty acid production, or the microbial activity. It does say that the fiber degradation in the rumen was significantly improved when the sodium hydroxide or lye treated wheat was fed. The in vivo or in the body of the animal experiments demonstrated that feeding sodium hydroxide and or formaldehyde treated wheat to steers significantly increased the amount of starch that reached the small intestine. The amount of starch that entered the duodenum increased by 57% and 75% when steers were fed sodium hydroxide and formaldehyde treated wheat compared to the control phase respectively. This higher quantity of starch was digested and absorbed, which can provide an increased glucose supply to the animal. So what they were hoping for out of mixing the lye with the grain wasn't to treat for worms. It was actually to get the most out of the grain. 
that's what we mentioned before the nixtamalization of maybe corn this is actually wheat but what it's doing is helping break that down so that the animal gets the most out of the feed this is how we can reduce our input costs when it comes to our animal agriculture so okay we've already talked about that the grain that goes into the animal after it's treated with the lye doesn't have the base alkalinity to damage the animal and because of that it probably doesn't have the alkalinity to damage the worms now can worms be damaged by a high alkaline environment yes we talked about that in my last video but it's correct that the buffering of the rumen by itself and the grain when it's consumed balances that to the point where that in and of itself isn't going to kill worms However, I'm not saying that it doesn't work. There's a lot of different accounts and experiences of people that say otherwise. So I get to thinking, if it does work, why does it work? Now it's very well known that one of the many ways to help just naturally support your animals against worm infections is to do so nutritionally. If your animals have regular access to really great nutrition and minerals, that in and of itself is really the best. That is going to support them so that their systems work as functionally best as they are designed to work. There are genetic factors. Some goats tend to just be hardier than other goats, but when their systems are down, either because they are sick or they just don't have the right amount of nutrition, which then again can impart sickness. Worms love to take that as an opportunity to bloom and to thrive. So if they are foundationally supported well, they tend to do better just as a whole. And so maybe, here's the hypothesis here, maybe the lie doesn't actively kill the worms, but it supports the animal enough that whatever systems they have internally to help balance out this load, and it acts to just more naturally optimize their systems to function as, as they should. So the person that sent me this email with a lot of links in it said, I would stumble down an adjacent rabbit hole and came across a few fascinating articles that led me to caustic treated grain or sodium hydroxide wheat, which apparently is used quite extensively as feed in the beef and milk cow industries. Now I know as well as you do that these industries spend a lot of money on their animals some of it more usefully applied than others. But one thing they are not going to do is feed their animals something that is going to kill them quickly or degrade their bodies, i.e. rumen destruction, by lye poisoning. Not exactly goat related, but it is livestock and ruminant related. Very good point, very good point. I don't think these things would be done if it was going to cause damage. This particular paper is about caustic treated grain. So lye treated grain and exactly how to mix that up for the proper dilution. Here are some of the key points. And again, these are linked below. It says homegrown caustic grain can be a relatively low cost, high energy feed. There is a significant difference in cost between home produced and purchased in. Caustic treatment gives the grain greater rumen stability and safety precautions must be observed if caustically treating grain on farm which we know. There's actually a lot of things that you could give your goat that could harm them. And some of them are the chemical dewormers that people frequently reach for. Prohibit is one of those dewormers that could absolutely kill a goat if it is diluted and given improperly. Same thing with copper sulfate. That is not the cop copper oxide particles like given in the bolus, although you probably can over overdo those as well. But there's like a liquid copper that can and has absolutely killed goats before. And so I feel like lye is just another one of those things in the toolbox that could absolutely cause harm, but does it have to every time? No. And so I think it's probably time that we put at least that part to rest. We're gonna do a little bit of change of scenery <laughs> because the sun was getting in my eyes in the shed. But another thing that I have seen circulating, which I did expect, and I did mention this in my last video, was the notion that any like success story with using sodium hydroxide as a dewormer must just be the placebo effect. There's gotta be something else going on. It can't possibly be that the lie is working. And 
I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, it's not up to me to say because I don't have experience with that. I haven't done it yet. I do have plans to test this out in a couple of my meat goats. They are actually right here. I just moved them out to this spot because they were dry lotted in here. And a dry lot situation isn't really what I was looking for. I wanted them to be able to get exposed to some worms so that I could test them for a fecal. I did want them to have some kind of detectable load so that we could see if feeding them the lye soaked feed has any effect on the worm load here. Does it kill the worms? Maybe not, but could it affect the load? Possibly, and it could be nutritionally related. Do we know for sure? No. Is this an official scientific study? No, but it's one of those things where if you try it and it works, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that you're crazy. I actually think it's pretty offensive for anybody to tell you that what you're doing and the things that you're clearly seeing can't be what you're actually seeing. It must be the placebo effect. Like talk about gaslighting. I understand that there are studies out there that show that 50% of caregivers have some kind of placebo effect going on where they think the animal is being remedied by their treatments when they're not actually being remedied. But to me, what that says is that, okay, there's 50% that might have it wrong. That means that there must be 50% that have it right, correct? So not everybody that you're seeing with the experience is experiencing the placebo effect. At least half of them should be seeing something quantifiable. Does that make sense? Now, do I think it's appropriate to take an animal that is severely anemic and do an experimental treatment on them? I don't. I think that you should do everything that we know works, like chemical dewormers, unfortunately. What we should do for animals that are like that is do what we know works. Do what we know is proven to work in that area. And then once they're brought back to stability, I think it's personally fine to do what I'm planning on doing. Take a fecal, see where it's at, treat with the feed, which clearly we've proven can be done safely, and then take another fecal and go from there. And if it works for you, it works for you. Don't let anybody tell you that it's not working for you just because they don't want it to work. One of the things that irks me about this conversation is that it's almost, I don't know, elitist. Like if you can't afford, you know, a hundred dollar bottle of Sidectin, or if you can't afford to make a barn where you can have a dry lot to treat an animal, then that means you're not worthy. I disagree. I like, I wholeheartedly disagree. I do believe that there are more, there's more than one way to do this thing correctly. And I do believe at the heart of it that we all do just have the best intentions. We all just want this thing to work and work well. And I don't think that you have to have gobs of cash or big barns or the capacity to do something that's as intensive as pasture rotation can be in order to have success. These treatments that we have now that I'm very grateful that we have, they're new. Like they haven't been around as long as goats have been around. They haven't been around as long as we've been keeping goats. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it works, but I'm also not going to sit here and tell you that going back to basics with something that has worked for a long time is wrong. Cause I can't say that it's wrong. I can't prove that it's wrong. And so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Simple as that. How's it going over here? Hmm? Gonna have some babies in February? So yeah, everybody just take a breather. There is proof out there that this is at least not harmful. Do we have the proof that says that it's effective? No, but you can, you can do it yourself. You can take some of your healthier animals and see what happens. It's not suggested that you feed a lye soaked feed every day because it is higher in salt. So you don't want to throw their balances off, but occasionally it seems like the support is actually pretty good for their systems. It will provide them an easier to digest grain with a little bit more of a buffering. And that type of support might be exactly what their systems need to fight whatever might be on board.